Hello, and thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Monthly Market Roll, where we provide a look back at the economy, markets, and investments, and other macroeconomic data for last month, and then we roll forward to this month with our insights for what lies ahead. I'm Brad Rathy, a partner, senior director of portfolio management at Waverly, and I'm joined by my good friend, colleague. I'm John Cox. I'm chief investment officer of public markets. So I'd say we get right into it, John. Uh, it's It's been an exciting first half, right? We've, we've gone through Q1, Q2. We've made it to the halfway point. Give me a little bit on your general thoughts, what you've seen up to this point and how things how things are looking for, for the economy and markets. Yeah, it has been a good start uh, for 2024. The first six months, we've had pretty good economic numbers. When you look at GDP growth, it was one and a half percent for the roughly one and a half percent for the first quarter. We're looking at about two percent for the second quarter. Uh, the job growth has continued to be pretty strong, but it's tapered off just a little bit, which is not necessarily a bad thing when it comes to the Fed, which we'll talk about later. Unemployment ticked up from a low of 3.4 percent up to slightly above 4 uh, percent. Inflation has started to moderate a little bit over the last couple of months. So things are shaping up a little bit better for the economy. Uh, the markets have done well in 2024. But it's been uh, there's been a pretty big dispersion among the best asset classes and those that have not done quite as well. Overall, global equities are up 10 or 11 percent for the year. Bonds are kind of flat, but it might be setting up for a pretty good second half of the year. Here's John and myself. And I would say three main factors. You saw. We're going to break this into two sections the way we normally do. Talk about what we've seen. And John got into a little bit on the macro side. Three main points on what we've seen. They're going to roll into kind of next month, next quarter, the rest of the year. I would say big tech is definitely dominated. You know, that's been a big, big part of uh, the story. If you watch CNBC, central bank dislocation, you're starting to see the Federal Reserve is always the main game in town. What are they doing? You know, but if you look at what you know European central bank is doing, you look at uh, Bank of England, Bank of China, Bank of uh, of Japan, all doing a little bit different things, and I think that's creating some dislocation. And then a really strong first half uh, of the year. And so I'd say let's get right into it. Uh, this is the chart. I really thought this is a powerful chart. We have some of our great analysts uh, came up with uh, this chart. But what's this chart say to you, John? I mean, I think this is this to me shows kind of what's been going on this year so far. Yeah, it really emphasizes the fact that the S&P 500 has done so much better than other asset classes. And we have to keep in mind we're we're just at the halfway point. So in, in any given year, if an investment or an asset class was up five or six percent at this point in the year, we'd be excited. But the fact that the S&P is up 15 percent puts a little bit of a damper on on the returns of the other categories. But as we've seen in time, asset classes move kind of in and out of favor right now, as we'll talk about later, there's a lot of optimism about technology companies and, and corporate earnings, but there are also some some asset classes that are positioned to do really, really well when when that that um, cycle turns a little bit. So um, all in all, great start to the year. Diversification uh, will will continue to to benefit investors as we go forward. Yeah, I think it's a good setup. I think the key thing is just keep that diversification, uh, understand where things have gone. Don't overstretch for things every time we've gone through. I can think throughout my career, 87, 89, 94, all the different periods where you said, oh, this is a new, new thing. We just want to keep a balance. We're not saying that technology isn't going to do really well. We're just saying try to keep that balance. Try to have a reasonable, you know, you want to have a good volatility. And I think fixed income is also very interesting. We're going to, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but this one, I think, just thinking worldwide, right? We invest worldwide with international. Uh, and I think the dollars played such a key factor uh, in, in performance. And you saw you know, central banks, some are cutting, the US is keeping it stable. You can see the impact. What is your thoughts on international investing? You know, the dollar is definitely strong, makes sense, right? We have the best growth right now. However, you know, it, it, it could change and dollar diversification has its benefits. What are you seeing from international markets and, and some of the dislocation you're seeing from central banks? Yeah, international has been, international equities have been somewhat out of favor for several years now. And the dollar has been stronger, as you mentioned. Uh, valuations appear to be much better outside the US, even though earnings growth and, and technology favors, favors the US. But we've seen some changes in Fed rate policy. And even uh, in the last few weeks with some of the U.S. economic data coming in a little bit lighter than expected, it's it's um, increased the odds that the Fed will will cut rates in September, which uh, previously was sort of off the table. But the markets are saying there's a 75 percent chance that there's a rate cut in September. 
which would likely be a good kind of catalyst for for the markets and and to keep the economy um, you know out of recession or or away from a downturn. And and then another rate cut projected in December. So uh, right now it looks like the Fed may cut rates as much as half a percent in 2024, and then continue that rate cut cycle into 2025. So that will um, that could have some impact on the dollar. It could have some impacts on on international investments. Uh, but more than anything, it's going to um, try to prevent any economic deterioration in the U.S. Yeah, and markets love moderation, right? They love moderating inflation. They love reasonable growth. They, I mean, markets really don't like 5% GDP growth. They don't want to see 9% inflation. They love this type of market where it's moderate unemployment, moderate growth. It doesn't have to be. I think a lot of people think, oh, we need 5% GDP growth. We need all these things to have a good market. That's definitely not the case. And I think you are having a, you can see in the market right now, it is liking this moderate type of thing uh, and moderate economics. And so I do think, and you see, obviously this is similar to what we saw before, but this is just kind of Q2 where the S&P uh, outperform other markets. And we see it in a couple other graphs and you see it here. We're just saying, hey, we understand that this is happening. Thinking about portfolio construction and how we want to position things and what things we think have value. And so we're just always looking at all these things. And these are just other examples of, of things that we're looking at. But let's say we're rolling into July, rolling into the next, uh, you know, uh, the rest of the year. Uh, I would say one of the things that we've seen in a lot of interest is cash is king. How are people doing on their fixed income? We do think there's ample opportunities in the fixed income. And then just thinking about where we are right now, comparing it to other years in the S&P 500 and just thinking about how how, how we're comparing. And so the one thing, and, and John, I know you, get, you, you, you talk to clients every day. This is something everybody's talking about. It's really amazing thinking we had no rates for 20 years. And now you're seeing that you're going to have potential to make over 5% you know, on an annualized basis for basic cash. But there's lots of ideas in cash. It isn't just money market. I know, you know, advisors are talking to clients. Clients are asking all the time about cash and money markets, T-bills. There's lots of different ideas here. I just think if clients are, are, are looking at this, they have cash on the sidelines. We have a lot of ideas. Come come talk to your advisor about different ideas that we have on cash. Money market's one of them, but we look at a lot of things. We have all kinds of different things to look at right now. And so, but it's to me, it's very exciting, I guess, just because for the first I guess the last 20 years, it has been terrible. Uh, what are you hearing from clients, you know, in their desire for fixed income and money market investments They have cash on the sidelines and obviously throwing off a lot of cash, right? I think that's one of the key things with the economy right now. We have a lot of cash being thrown off from investments. And it's creating this you know, effect that people feel wealthier because of all the, the yield that they're getting, which they didn't get for a long time. Right. Yeah, I think there's uh, the last statistic I saw was there's something like six trillion dollars in money markets or short term securities. And we still have this interesting dynamic of an inverted yield curve where short term interest rates are higher than long term interest rates. That probably won't persist for too much longer. Uh, we should start to see that more that yield curve normalize in the next 12 to 24 months. But when when clients think about the most conservative part of their portfolio, they need to determine what's the what's the time horizon of, of the cash. And if they have short-term cash needs, if there's a purchase on the horizon that's within six to 12 months, then that may uh, lead them to one, lead us to recommend one type of investment. If the time horizon is one to three years, then we may look at a different type of short-term investment. But like you said, there are opportunities across the whole landscape of fixed income. It's not just Treasuries, but corporate bonds look good. Um, some below investment grade securities might be appropriate uh, in certain situations. We've looked at private credit, um, mortgages, non-US securities. The the opportunity set in fixed income, like you said, is is probably as good as it's been in the last 10 to 15 years. So equities are still positioned to do well, but this is a this is it's exciting to see good opportunities in fixed income. This was just something I think is interesting. It's it's really just gives perspective, right? And one, how well things have gone. But I think a lot of people think this year is just so much different than any other year. And this chart, I, I don't, I'm just such a, I guess, a quant by nature and found this pretty interesting that you have almost the exact same return the last three months at the end of each three months. And it just shows... It isn't any different this time necessarily. It's just a different structure. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have volatility. This was last year. We had a little bit of volatility at, you know, going into, this is basically Q3 going into Q4. Uh, give me a little bit just to wrap things up. You know, what's your overall perspective on markets as we go through, you know, the rest of the year? Uh, how, are you, how are you feeling about, you know, markets at this point? 
Yeah. I mean, obviously still uncertainty with um, the election and, and um, last year, August, September, October were not great months. And then we really rallied in November and December. We don't know if it'll follow that pattern this year. A lot of that's going to be dependent on corporate earnings, whether the economy can continue to to generate a decent amount of growth. And if the Fed does go down that rate cutting path and start to um, get interest rates back to more normal levels. So, I mean, I think obviously there are always factors that are out of our control and things that we can't really predict. But when you just look at the big picture and look at kind of the global economy, the global markets, uh, there there are concerns, but there are also a lot of reasons to be optimistic. So as long as investors have a three to five year time horizon, um, you know, they should kind of stay invested. We'll have good months and bad months and they shouldn't be um, changing their uh, their risk tolerance too frequently unless their circumstances change. No, I think you wrapped up. You took most of my uh, concluding comments here, John. I think long term, definitely positive. Like you said, three to five years, we're still you know, very optimistic. Short term, certainly cautiously optimistic. You have a nice run. You have some different risk factors. Always worried about different things uh, you know, that can happen in the economy. But overall, the economy is in good shape you know, as we move into you know, the second half of, uh, of the year. And so, John, thanks for uh, coming on on again. I really appreciate it. And thank you, everyone, for listening to the Monthly Market Roll. If you like what you heard and have any questions about the topics we discussed today, feel free to reach out to Waverly Advisors, any of our advisors. We'd love you to reach out to them. Some of the things especially we talked about, interest rates, what's going on in the economy. You know, we think it's a good time to reach out to your advisor uh, and talk about these things. Information on how to reach us is in the description. You can get more information at waverlyadvisors.com. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.